The Boeing Company is a multinational corporation that has within its scope of operations the design, manufacturing, and sales of airplanes, rotocraft, rockets, satellites, telecommunications equipment, and missiles worldwide. Despite this, the company is widely known for its sales of advanced luxury airplanes. The most popular Boeing airplane is the Boeing 747, which is so popular for its use as Air Force One, the plane that transports the President of the United States. In this video, we will be discussing several aircraft that a lot of people don't know were built by Boeing. Boeing X-51 Wave Rider The Boeing X-51 Wave Rider is an air-breathing scramjet-powered hypersonic aircraft manufactured by a collaboration between Boeing, Pratt & Whitney, Rocketdyne, and the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, while the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory operated this aircraft. The project completed 200 seconds of flight time with a top speed of Mach 5 in its maiden flight. The X-51 was snuggled into the wing of a B-52 Stratofortress bomber and released at an altitude of 50,000 feet. A solid rocket booster then boosts the aircraft up to Mach 4.5, and then the X-51 scramjet engine, fueled by military fuel, JP-7, propels the aircraft to an altitude of 70,000 feet and allows it to reach Mach 5. This unmanned autonomous supersonic combustion ramjet-powered hypersonic flight test was made primarily using standard aerospace materials like aluminum, steel, Inconel, and titanium. For thermal protection, the vehicle utilizes Boeing's signature reusable insulation tiles, similar to those aboard Space Shuttle orbiters. Only four X-51As were built for the Air Force, as the X-51A program is a technology demonstrator and was not designed to be a prototype for a weapon system. Instead, it was designed to pave the way to future hypersonic weapons, hypersonic intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, as well as future access to space. Since scramjets can burn atmospheric oxygen, they do not need to carry large fuel tanks containing oxidizers like conventional rockets. They are also being investigated as a way to more efficiently launch payloads into orbit. Other key technologies that will be demonstrated by the X-51A include thermal protection system materials, airframe and engine integration, and high-speed stability and control. Boeing YAL-1 Airborne Laser the YAL-1 ABL uses high-energy laser beams to intercept and destroy ballistic missiles at their boost phase. The Boeing 747-700F aircraft was modified to accommodate the airborne laser and associated installations. From the first test flight in 2002 to 2011, when the project was canceled, the U.S. government has spent around $5.2 billion on the entire project. The swivel turret fitted to the nose of the 747 receives the main laser beam generated by a megawatt chemical oxygen iodine laser and focuses the beam to the target by telescopic mirrors. The laser beam heats a spot on the target leading to an explosion. The YAL-1 ABL is more of a weapons system than an aircraft. One of these with a low-power laser was a test-fired flight at an airborne target in 2007. Then, a high-energy laser was used to intercept a test target in January of 2010, before the program was later canceled in 2011. It made its final flight on February 14, 2012, to davis monthan Air Force Base in Tucson, Arizona, to be kept in storage at the Boneyard by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. It was ultimately scrapped in September of 2014 after all usable parts of the ABL were removed. The ABL program was initiated by the U.S. Air Force in 1996 with the awarding of a product definition risk reduction contract to the Boeing ABL team. The development of the system was ultimately accomplished by a team of contractors. Boeing Defense, Space and Security provided the aircraft, the management team and the systems integration processes. Northrop Grumman supplied the coil, and Lockheed Martin supplied the nose turret and the fire control system. Towards the end of 2010, the nation's defense ministry began to express some concerns with the practicality of the program concept. Considering the high cost necessary to build and then operate and maintain the ABLs, Air Force Chief of Staff Schwartz finally admitted that the system did not reflect something that is operationally viable. Boeing Shuttle Carrier Boeing Shuttle Carrier aircraft are conventional B-747s modified to piggyback the shuttle. 
Two shuttle carriers served under NASA to bring orbiters from landing sites to space stations. The very first shuttle carrier entered into service in 1977, and both carriers were retired in 2012. Special strengthening methods have been taken to improve the load carrying capacity of the aircraft by adding extra reinforcement layers to the location of the three protruding struts where the shuttle is attached. A combination of special crawler cranes hoist the orbiter when attaching or taking off from the shuttle carrier aircraft. The demated carrier is then mated to a mover to transport the carrier to a resting place until the next mission. These massive planes that NASA bought from Boeing, modified and used for several decades to ferry its space shuttles from place to place, are now on display in museums in America. The first one, N905NA, bought in 1970 and used until 2013, was finally dismantled and transported to the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas for preservation. It's now on display in an area of the center called Independence Plaza and has been on display since 2016 with a replica space shuttle attached to it. The second of these SCAs, the N911NA, they acquired in 1988. It flew its first shuttle carrying mission in 1991, transporting the then novel Endeavour Space Shuttle to Kennedy Space Center in Florida from Palmdale, California, the plane's place of manufacture. The N911NA was withdrawn from service in February of 2012, used by NASA as a spare parts source for its SOFIA flying telescope, and then eventually sent for preservation two years later. It's currently on display at the Joe Davies Heritage Air Park in Palmdale, California. AV-8B Harrier Developed from Hawker's Italy Harrier, the world's first vertical short takeoff landing V-Stall aircraft, it entered into service in 1985 with the United States Marine Corps as its primary operator. Powered by a single Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine that receives airflow from two intakes, engine exhaust is routed through four exhaust nozzles, two in the cold end of the engine and the other two near the hot end. Thrust vectoring through the nozzles gives the fighter jets the ability to perform vertical landings and minimize landing and takeoff roll. Fuel capacity can be increased by adding two external drop tanks. Air-to-air -air refueling is also possible through a probe and drogue system to improve the combat radius. The Harrier single-engine ground attack aircraft is primarily employed on light attack multi-role missions, ranging from close air support of ground troops to armed reconnaissance. The project that led to this jet's creation started in the early 1970s as a cooperative effort between the US and the UK and was aimed at addressing the operational inadequacies of the first-generation Hawker Harrier. In the 1990s, Boeing and BAE Systems assumed management of the Harrier family following corporate mergers that led to Boeing acquiring McDonnell Douglas, the company that originally oversaw the manufacture, operations, and maintenance of these aircraft. Boeing and BAE Systems continued studying the design of these flights until the early 2000s when the project was abandoned. Boeing E3 Sentry the E3 Sentry is an Airborne Warning and Control System, AWACS, developed by Boeing. The first E3 entered into service in 1977 and is still used today by the United States Air Force, France, NATO, and Saudi Arabia. The main tasks of the E3 include airborne surveillance, command, control, and communication. These tasks are performed by the crew assigned in 14 command and control stations with the cabin. The most distinctive part of the E3 is no doubt the rotating radome. The rate of revolutions varies depending on the active scanning mode of the rotodome. The multi-mode radar can be used for airborne surveillance and surface surveillance under maritime mode. The aircraft was initially manufactured following the U.S. Air Force's effort to find a suitable replacement for its piston-engined Lockheed EC-121 Warning Star, which had, at the time, been in service for over a decade. In 1991, the E-3s participated in the Persian Gulf War, playing a crucial role in directing coalition aircraft against Iraqi forces. The aircraft's capabilities have been maintained and enhanced through numerous upgrades. Now, as the Boeing 707s are no longer in production, the E-3 mission package has been fitted into the Boeing E-767 for the Japan Air Self-Defense Forces. The E-10 MC-2A was intended to replace the United States Air Force E-3s, along with the RC-135 and the E-8 Joint Stars, but the program was canceled by the Department of Defense. That concludes the Boeing aircraft that will be tabled today. Let us know in the comment section below which of these aircraft you find the most intriguing 
or at the very least, the most startling from a firm like Boeing.